so give him a break. Okay, and we are live. Hey guys, it's Victor on the bicycle uh, going to work and give you a little combination video today. Uh, kind of a J News, talk about the news a little bit. Um, kind of uh, pick up on something that I mentioned last week about the shooting, not the shooting, the stabbing. The stabbing here in, in Japan. And uh, I guess, no, well, any other news? Well, yeah, there's other weird news in Japan to mention, but not a lot. There's a Shinkansen above. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pretty cool. We're on our way to uh, Nagoya. And I've got my new uh, setup here with the microphone and the GoPro 7 Black with ultra stabilization, whatever that's called, hyper stabilization. And anyway, take you on the scenic route. Okay, let's. Uh, so the, anyway, just to, just uh, just to uh, just to reiterate, this video is going to be J News and a bike tour and uh, getting off topic occasionally. So last week, I believe it was last Tuesday, some nut met a bunch of uh, went to a bus stop of a Catholic school girls. Where a bunch of Catholic school girls were waiting to get on the bus. Now, of course, uh, Japan is like less than one percent uh, Christian, but they do have Catholic schools here, and some people are Catholic, but a lot of them are just um, are just uh, going there for the education. Um, Take it through a long scenic route here, so I'm waiting for the light. But uh, the total deaths of the stabbing were two. Two total deaths and 17 injured. And I'll just explain how it happened. A uh, guy had apparently two knives, one in each hand. And when they searched his house, he had a bunch of uh, books or magazines about serial killers and mass killings. And just basically a psycho, right? He was 51 years old, which is a very dangerous age. That is, that is my age. And he lived with his aunt and uncle, apparently. Interestingly enough, the only picture they had of him was 36 years old when he was in junior high school. You'll see this guy picking up garbage in front of you. This is very typical at this time of the morning. People who work in certain areas take care of their own neighborhoods. Where should we go? Should we go this way? It's always interesting to me how people clean their areas. Though when you get on highways or off ramps, you'll see people, you'll see so, so much garbage, it's disgusting. And beaches sometimes, it's, it's pretty bizarre. This is behind Nagoya Station here. And I think they have a brothel around here. This might be it here. I think this is a brothel. Uh, my foreign friend says he was denied access here. Uh, which I think is funny. I've never attempted to enter a brothel, by the way, get your point off the subject here. Uh, let's see, so the guy was a nut. Uh, he uh, approached, so of course he had, oh yeah, he had non, he was wearing gloves that made it easier for him to hold things in his hands, grasp weapons, you know, non-slip gloves, I guess they're called, I don't know, rubber gloves. Right? You'll see them sometimes uh, around. I often see them like, people like drop them and stuff. I've come across many rubber gloves on the ground there before. Okay. Whoops. I'm on the wrong side of the street. That right there. And uh, the way he approached it was he he approached the the, uh, the bus stop where all the girls were waiting, and they're all like elementary school kids. And a man came out of a Lawson's or some kind of convenience store. And he stabbed him in the back. The guy was, I think, 36 years old or 39 years old. And he was one of the Japan's only interpreters of whatever they speak in Myanmar. I don't know what language that is, but it's a guy who said he went to college and he's like, I wanna I wanna study something that nobody, a language that nobody knows. Uh, and when Sun Young, oh sorry, An, An Young, An Sun, I forgot that woman then, but the, the activist from Myanmar, An and Sun Ki or whatever came to Japan. He, he interpreted for her. I think she met the emperor, and so he interpreted for them. So he got to meet the emperor. Apparently, after he was uh, yeah, so he was stabbed in the back and died. And apparently, after he was killed, uh, the emperor, the, I guess now the former emperor, 
either him or, or his wife sent a note of condolences to uh, the wife, the widow. By the way, the way to say that is Goshusho Samadeshta. Goshusho Samadeshta, which I think is a good word to know, right? Goshusho Samadeshta. Hopefully you'll never have to use that, but occasionally you do. up on the Goya station now. It's uh, a little bit after nine, so it's not that busy. It's really busy right before nine, of course. The other day, uh, actually two nights, two days ago, I was going by here and they had all, a lot of uh, these, those uh, foreigners trying to get Japanese to donate money for children. And it's, you know, the fake scam. I did a video on that a while ago. There's, I chased one away. I said, hey, so wa sagida. I said, that's, uh, that's fraud. Sagi is fraud. S-A-G-I. Good word to know. Sagi! Other foreigners in this area. There's a police station, police box right up ahead on the right there. But, um, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty brave. Pretty, uh, brazen, I guess is the word. Oh, this girl's got her pants ripped. So that's the common thing here. Wear ripped pants these days. Okay, first. That's a probably better view. Okay. <laughs> Why not enjoy the view, right? Um, so that was the guy who did that. Now, that was on Tuesday. What's also um, interesting is that a few days later, I was taking, uh, I, was, I was riding my bicycle to, to school as normal, and I passed by, I was riding a different way, just to, just to make it interesting. And I was uh, passing by an elementary school and I noticed security. This was on Thursday, yeah. The security was way up. Oh, it was on the 30th. Remember the 30th was? Yeah, I think it was 30th. Yeah, that's right. Because it was a zero day. So on zero days only in the Nagoya area, uh, there, are, there are more policemen uh, at all the intersections and volunteers helping children cross the street and holding flags. And basically they're trying to get people to slow down on days in, in this is only Nagoya, days that end with zero, like the 10th, the 20th, and the 30th. And those are called zero days. And the, uh, it's kind of a symbolic thing, I guess, but maybe it does work. They try to bring down the number of car accidents to zero on those particular days. Right? That's the goal. Anyway, uh, so on this particular, it was the 30th, and of course there were more cops than usual at the intersections and such. But there was also a bunch of uh, cops uh, in front of the school itself, the elementary school that I passed by. I think it was an elementary school, pretty sure. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, of course I noticed it, but wow, more cops than usual. And the staff was out, like all the men and women who worked there were out in front of the school. And they were, uh, you know, guarding, you know, being, being alert and showing their presence. So at the next intersection, there was a red light, so I was on my bicycle, so I stopped and I, there was a cop there. And I said, hey, uh, I noticed it's uh, a lot of cops today <laughs> because of, uh, in front of schools, I said, you know. Is that more than usual? And he, at first he was a little reticent to speak to me. But I said, oh, I'm, I'm a teacher too, I'm a teacher. And uh, I teach a lot of high school teachers, so I know about this. A lot of my students are actually teachers. And he goes, oh, he loosened up right away. And uh, we talked a little while, and he told me that, yeah, that was the case. Oh my God, I'm way behind schedule. He said that, uh, that um, they're being more vigilant than normal. And trying to be sick, kyokuteki, he said, sick, kyokuteki. They're being more, you know, I guess, positive, aggressive is the, is the word, uh, proactive. And I said, uh, I asked him about the way the police uh, decide things in Japan. And I said, did you guys get like a, I, I mean, you're, you're all independent, right? Each, each uh, that's how I asked. I said, each uh, prefecture is independent, isn't it? And he said, yes, yes, we're all independent. I said, so. Uh, but is, do you think this is happening all over the country? He says, probably because Abe, the Prime Minister, said we should all be, you know, more active, more proactive in uh, taking care of uh, kids. And Abe did say something. He said that we will do anything and everything we need to do to protect the kids. So I thought that's cool, you know. Uh, and of course, when I made my video last time, I said, we've got to do something. And of course, everyone just jumped the gun to, to think that I, I said, I, I want to ban guns, which I never said that. 
I think it's impossible to ban guns. Uh, uh, though, I mean, I, I will tell you that I think a gunless society is, is ideal. A gunless society is ideal. Now, Japan is a gunless society, but there is hunting here. So if, you ha if you're a hunter, you can still hunt in Japan. And you can get a gun license. Uh, I haven't done that because I don't hunt. Hunting is kind of, kind of cruel. But that's just me, my opinion. That's not really the topic here. But um, <laughs> if you do own a gun in Japan, the, the laws governing how you keep that gun are very specific and very strict. And what those are, are you have to keep the gun in a safe and you have to keep the ammunition in a safe. All right, that's it, pretty clear. Gun and ammunition in a safe. And the cops may appear at your door anytime to check to make sure you are following, are following the rules. So I think that is a good thing, All right? You can have a gun and just keep, it, keep the ammunition in a safe, keep the gun in a safe. Now, someone in the comment section said, I'm safe because that's what I do, but he didn't know that that's what we do in Japan, I and mean, that's what Japanese people do. Uh, I myself, I'm an American without a gun. Um, so, so, as a result of that, you have very few accidental deaths in Japan, gun-related accidental deaths. But in America, from what I gather, it's all too common. Uh, I did a little research before I started this, but there were there are approximately 110 accidental death gun or kids killed by accidental death uh, every year. Every year, 110 kids, right? And 24% of the population of the USA is under 18, which is 74 million people and is actually the lowest amount of children we've had in the States for a long time. It's usually a little bit higher, like 25, 26, 27. So right now we're kind of low. I don't know what it is in Japan, but I'm, I'm sure it's lower than that. Uh, the average age in many, many places, in, I think it's something like uh, 55 or something, it's quite high. People live a lot longer here. Anyway, so let's, let's, uh, let's talk about gun, shoot, gun mass shooting very quickly. I said in my previous video, I said that, you know, a lot of people are going to take the uh, stabbing as and politicize it and say, see, there's no point in banning guns because people just pick a knife. Yeah, but it's a lot harder to kill a bunch of people uh, with a knife. You got to get in there, you got to get close. And, and this guy stabbed 17. Well, actually he stabbed 19 people, but only two died. Right, so um, fatality, fatality rate with gun with knives is much uh, lower. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, but ultimately, you know, it isn't it isn't just the guns. Of course, there's something wrong with our society, and there's something wrong with our government. Now, Mulvaney, the president's chief of staff, came out and says we can't protect everyone from all the deranged people out there but well yeah I, I understand that but of course we should try right that's what the police are out there for and we should we should try to protect everybody and ultimately it is my opinion that it's really uh, it's really just a priority a matter of priority what is your priority and it's obvious that our priority as a country is not protecting our children this year alone, oh, oh, is this still working? Oops, microphone just got caught on something. Okay. This year alone, we've had over 148 mass shootings, and 149 people, four times, almost four times, as many people were injured by guns. That's this year alone, and it's only, it's just, that's all, just up to May. <laughs> that's just up to May, okay? There's an average of one a day. And uh, last year, in 2018, there were over 300 and, I don't know the number, but up to, uh, until December 18th, there was something like 307. The article that I saw, someone can 
curve, you know, do your own research, correct it if you want in the comments. But that's, that's a lot of effing people dead, a lot of mass shootings. Japan, of course, doesn't have that problem. And you can say it's, po it's, it's partially uh, psychological or mental health and stuff, but Japan has a much higher suicide rate. Don't you think suicide is better than mass shootings? I mean, we gotta agree with that. Uh, suicide rate is also up because of guns. So, so gun. So let let but let's take out. Let's take mass shootings out of the whole equation. Okay. Let's just say, uh, even though, even though, <laughs> well, I mean, because because I will agree with you that if someone is crazy enough and wants to cause destruction, he's going to try to do something, uh, and he's going to get his hand on guns, even if you make guns illegal. That's really not going to help that much. I can understand that. Uh, uh, this year there were two shootings at schools and one in a church, so that number is not that high. I don't know if uh, so Trump said something about let's put um, let's give all the teachers guns, which is probably not a good idea. But the uh, the safe idea would be to uh, have security guards armed and trained at every school, but that cost would be phenomenal. But if we really care about our children, isn't it worth it? I don't know. I can say I'm glad that the, the chances of that ever happening to my kids is, you know, slim to none. But the ultimate, yeah, yeah the ultimate question is how, how important are your kids? to you, Americans. We Americans, how important are our kids to us? Let's say we want to keep our guns, okay? Fine. Let's say that you're never gonna stop mass shooters. Okay, fine. But then there are no suggestions for mental health. No one has said anything. No one ever made, I, ne I never hear anyone saying, okay, we gotta increase our budget for mental health. We gotta reach out to people. We gotta have mental health workers going in around and knocking on people's doors and talking to people, right? You never hear that. And Americans, I don't think would appreciate, you know, <laughs> other Americans being nosy and coming to your house and saying, hey, are you okay? You know, what, how many guns do you have and all that stuff? Nobody wants to do that. It's nosy stuff. Um, and then the question of Increasing police presences like they do here in, in Japan, in Nagoya. They've increased police presence around schools. Is that really the way to go? Do we want a police state? I don't. And in a way, the police is kind of a... Uh, you can argue just a big game, right? We have to do what the police says because... There are more of them. <laughs> um, that's another subject I'd like to get into though. Because I do believe that police are necessary and overall decent I, would, I, will, I, won't, I, I won't even say it necessarily evil I'll just say they're necessary but do we need more of them? do we want a police state? because that seems like that's the only way you'd stop shooting at schools and stuff you got police in every hallway maybe not every classroom but every school you know and uh, some schools are huge Anyway, so the question, the question for you is, uh, how many deaths are acceptable? Because a lot of people, another, another thing that was done in, said in the comments last week was, we, uh, we should have our gun rights. You can't take away our guns because of the Second, Second Amendment, right? Which of course is another ridiculous argument since the uh, Constitution was written by men and it was never intended to include the amount of firepower that we have now. And it said in a relegated, regulated, sorry, regulated militia. About 30 years ago, or 20 years ago, the NRA successfully convinced society that that part of the, that part of the amendment uh, didn't exist. So now everyone thinks they have a right to have a gun. And I would argue that actually you don't. You don't have a right to a gun. Uh, you have a right to a gun if you are in a militia and most people are not and they don't have training 
there's a whole I mean there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do to decrease gun deaths in America even outside of mass killings I mean so if you want to argue that I'm wrong about mass killings and you'll never stop mass killings fine then then tell us tell me what you're going to do about the 110 children that are killed every year accidentally because some idiot who you know wasn't properly trained doesn't know how to keep his gun safe at home tell me about those kids that's 110 kids you can argue oh yeah it's only it's only uh, blacks and gangs and Mexicans, you know, who kill each other. But they're people too, right? And there's a reason that they exist, and that's connected to poverty. And there's no that hasn't been that hasn't been uh, solved yet either. So it's all connected. I mean, if you want to improve our society, we've got to tackle things like poverty and mental health and uh, gun training. I mean, there's all this stuff you can do. Okay, let's say you can have a gun, but how many guns is okay? The other day I saw this, some guy in California had over a thousand guns in his house. Do you really need a thousand guns? Does the Constitution say you could have a thousand guns? I don't know. Well, mostly I wanted to tell you that uh, what Japan did after the, the stabbing, which was increased police presence at schools, which I have, like I said, a few teachers who are my students. And they said, yeah, but it's just temporary. It'll go away, uh, you know, it'll, everything will go back to normal in a week. Which is true. But, uh, here's something that I thought was interesting. We should do that. Why don't we do that? Why don't we have random uh, days where only the police know, or the police decide they're gonna go check out some school in America, right? The, the police can just randomly check out schools, check out churches, go there, and and their presence alone, beautiful flowers, their presence alone should increase the uh, or decrease the number of uh, deaths just by just making it. You know, if you if you have if there's a police presence and you're if you let's say you're some mental case and you see that there's a police presence at a place that you're staking out, maybe it'll make you think twice. Or if you know the police might show up, you may not be prepared for that. It may, make, it may make you think twice. Probably not because you're a psycho, but anyway, that's all I got for you. It's a beautiful day on the way to school, and uh, I wanted to get a few things off my chest. So, in summary, I'm not a, I'm not for banning all guns, but I think something should be done uh, to address the problem. And if that, if that solution is not. Uh, directly related to guns, it should be related to either, either mental health and training and regulation. I mean, there's, there's a billion things we can do. Insurance. Anyway, I hope, uh, I hope Japanese policemen incre uh, in, uh, continue to occasionally visit schools and provide a presence there. Maybe that'll help. But luckily, you know, in Japan, this is very, very, very minor. A very, very uh, rare thing that happens. And, and honestly, I'm, I mean, yeah, those, those kids were kind of lucky. Only, only one kid died, and I'm sure. His, I mean, of course, it's a, still a tragedy, but and, and unacceptable. But better than uh, better than having a whole bunch die, right? Okay, gotta go. A little late, so I better speed up. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Look at this. You're looking at yourself now. Isn't that weird? Bye-bye. Yeah, bye!